welcome to a brand new episode of the Woolly Thistle Podcast. I'm here with my wonderful co-host Maggie. Hello. <laughs> I'm leaving space for you to talk. You Thank see you. that? Yes. <laughs> and I'm Corinne. I am the owner of the Woolly Thistle and host of this or co-host of this shopcast. And it's great to have you here. Um, as usual, we have a jam-packed episode, mm-hmm. don't we? Yeah. So we're going to roll right through it and hopefully you can knit through it and enjoy it or listen to us out on a walk or whatever it is you do. Um, we have not one, not two, but three winners to announce this time because last time we forgot one. Yeah, we got so chatty. We just kept on going, barreled right through the episode and then later on went, Huh. After the I fact. Don't, I don't think we read that second one. Exactly. So, um, and a couple of commenters caught that too, you eagle-eyed people. So, yeah. yes, we'll be doing that today, uh, all three of them. Yeah. And um, I do want to give a special mention to last episode. It was phenomenal. Mm-hmm. We had Marie Wallen. Many of you enjoyed that interview. And we had Caitlin and Rachel. And Rachel. And Rachel, the outpouring of love from you wonderful viewers mm-hmm. for Rachel was uh, amazing. I was so excited. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I knew that this was how our community responded. And it yeah. was amazing. You did not disappoint. Yeah. <laughs> so she is working hard on getting herself set up with um patreon Mm -hmm. and possibly kofi i'm not committing her to anything but i believe she's working on that and she'll be back with us in the next episode and hopefully everything will be set up then so that you can follow through um so many of you were just dying to help her which is just thank you so much that's so lovely we've got such a great community and rachel is a star she does such hard work uh Mm -hmm. living uh, alone there on a tiny island with her sheep her dogs her cats and our chickens and we just love visiting her so thanks so much for your support i know rachel was very moved yeah she was in the comments a lot too on mm. youtube it was wonderful yeah i will say if we because we've received comments emails all kinds of things if we get any information before her next segment we'll be sure to share it with you all we definitely will. otherwise just um, make sure you're on the newsletter and just stay tuned stay tuned yeah and last episode we had krista b who mm-hmm. is a viewer a woolly thistler and didn't she do a great job? She did an amazing job. Mm-hmm. Thoroughly enjoyed her segment. So mm-hmm. thank you for sending that in, Krista. And we have a whole page set up now that if you're interested in um, in presenting, helping present the Woolly Thistle yeah. podcast, that you can that you can go sign up. Yeah, it, there's a link in the show notes. Please do, please do. We want to hear from you. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Krista, you did a great job. Thank yes, you so thank much. You. And, gorgeousness and gorgeous yarn and the whole thing yeah. loved it talking of which what do we have on this episode Meg? um so we have kelsey with us mm-hmm. um we have emma with us yay and we have kim knitting yoga oh good so we've got a full episode mm-hmm. full of contributors um i've watched all of them and i really enjoyed uh kelsey's uh Show and tell. She's finished a couple of things. Yeah. Which is good. And she's also answering some questions about Manchalopi and Plotolopi. Yes, very helpful. Um, which, yeah, that was super helpful. We've been getting those questions a lot, so yeah. stay tuned. Yeah, stay tuned for that. And Emma, delightful Emma. Always delightful. Yeah. She's wearing a vanilla sweater. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and knitting <laughs> lots of color work. And knitting lots of color work. So enjoy that, too. Yes. Yeah. And then uh, Kim. Kim is awesome. She's, she's going to stretch out your hips and your thighs and calves and all that stuff today wonderful yes right yeah sounds good how are you feeling you sent a little uh yeah i've had a second cold i got a follow-up cold to my first cold um but this one was nothing compared to the last cold this cold was like the perfect amount of cold you're gonna have a cold like it was it was i was not well enough where i didn't really want to do a lot but i could still knit yeah whereas the previous cold i was so sick that i couldn't even knit yeah so that's bad this one i just you'll see i got a lot of uh color work knitting done it was perfect good 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 well i'm sorry i don't not... recommend getting a cold on cast on day but no. if you're gonna <laughs> well i'm glad it's not as bad as last time that was terrible no no you can tell i'm like still perky yes yeah, you're perky the nice thing is with the new stuffy nose the cough went away oh good yeah because yeah, you were hacking up along most yeah. days yeah that's good that's good so i i don't know exactly the science of how that worked out but uh your body can only take so much do you want to announce the first I winner? do so I will say we just saved the winner that we didn't call the previous time because you had picked for our, we our had Caitlin. picked it yes. um so we just left that and kept yeah. it on the show notes yeah so um the the winner from that previous episode of a $25 gift card to the woolly thistle is, is Lisa I don't know how to say this last name nice's 
Uh, it's N-Y-C-Z. Um, nice. I would go nice. Nice. Sure. Lisa, Lisa nice. nice. Well um, done, Lisa. Uh, well done. Lisa says, I'm fairly new to your podcast. You all do one, a wonderful job. I recently purchased your video vanilla sweater class. Oh, I can't wait to get started. Yay! Well, thank you so much, Lisa. If you can email us at info at the woolly thistle. Um, put prize winner in all caps. We will get you your $25 gift card. Yes, indeed. Congratulations. And sorry for the delay in announcing, but you know, sometimes we just have so much to talk about. Yes. So we do have two more winners to announce Yay! that are from the previous episode. Stay tuned. I've got them highlighted on our show notes. So hopefully <laughs> we, cannot, we don't miss them. Exactly. We cannot finish this without <laughs> calling them. Yes. Yeah. So what's up next? Um, uh, well, we already did an update on yeah. Rachel. But I want to know what you're wearing. Oh, this is my star cardigan, which I've worn before, maybe even recently. I do need to put a couple of little, I've just got hook and eyes on right now, yeah. but I want to put a couple of tiny little uh, Norwegian clasps on there. I think that would be nice. Yeah. This is a design by Donna Kay, who is a New Hampshire designer, very well known. Um, and the short story of the long story is that um, I saw this exact sweater on Instagram or cardigan on Instagram being worn by a beautiful Swedish woman and she had bought it at great expense from some department store yeah. and I tracked her down and I tracked down the store <laughs> And it was, it was a lot of money. And I'm like, no, I can get it for half that. So, but then I couldn't find the pattern. There was no pattern that was exactly like this. And I was lamenting that here on the Shopcast, or maybe it was on the old podcast. I don't remember now. I don't remember. Probably on the old audio. But anyway, Donna Kay reached out and said, um, I know exactly how to do that. I'll write you up a pattern. Just send me your measurements. Uh, I sent her a couple of measurements. And this is the result. That's and it's amazing. exactly what I wanted. Um, it is amazing. It was amazingly kind and generous mm -hmm. and um, just great skill that she had. And literally the instructions were this much. Wow. Which I am not like that when I write a pattern. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we, we convinced her after the fact to write it as a proper pattern that she could sell. And she did that. And we do have kits. Maybe mm -hmm. they're in stock. I'm not sure. Um, but uh, we do have kits that that have the pattern as well, I believe, or maybe you still have to. I think pattern the pattern now you get from Donna, which is we our had usual the pattern thing. for a limited time, but right. now it's reverted back. To but it's room. um it's a set in sleeve. Um, it's knitted in the round and steeked. I haven't ever cleaned up my steeks. It's knitted in Jameson and Smith two ply, and um, it's lovely. I love it. It's yeah. very comfortable. It's warm because it's uh you know two strands. Yeah, and it. It goes with everything. I'm wearing it with jeans today, but it definitely goes with a nice skirt or black pants yeah. and feel quite dressed up. Lovely. Yeah. 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 What are you wearing? I'm wearing a new sweater. Um, it is the Humulus uh, by Isabel Kramer. My it's sister lovely. knit it. This for is the one me. your sister knit. Oh, yes, it's it came in the mail. Lovely. I've worn it a few times. She knit it in all centrum using the worsted weight, the three ply. Ooh. Um, and Ooh. then she had some. I don't even think it's a worsted weight, but um, she had some. I want to say it was a Noro. Um, in her stash. I love it. And um, it's quite cozy. It fits perfect. Yeah. My sister has a good track record other than one sweater that I can think of. She just knits sweaters for people and they fit. Amazing. Well, that's that's good skill. This is lovely. Yeah. How do you like wearing it? I love it. Are you wearing... I, I do have a shirt on underneath. What I about often... your sleeves? Are they, do you have a shirt on? Yeah, yeah, like it goes under. Although okay. the other day I wore it with a three quarter and it was fine. Yeah. Like it's definitely a little rustic, yeah. but um, I don't. I wouldn't, it wouldn't bother me, I don't think. That's awesome. So I know me and usually having a base layer underneath, I just get yeah. more comfortable. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's lovely. Cozy. I love the color work and how yeah. it's changing. Yeah. Yeah. It gets a little bit more, Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Bright? No. Like, I feel like this you can really see, and then that looks more um, low contrast. Yeah. That's what I was looking for. That, yeah. Low contrast. But it I really love it. It really goes together really um, well. And it's very cozy. Like, yeah. it fits really good. Well done, Marie. Well done. Love it. Very deserving sister Best here. sister ever. Yeah. 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 Well, good. It made me realize that I've not knit her a sweater. And like, <laughs> I'm like, oh. And you I have the to... last one I knit her was a little tight oh. in the shoulders. So it's, I'm probably Well, it's her due. fault then. <laughs> yeah her shoulders must be messed up mm. um so well yeah. i had a fun thing come across my facebook the other day and i don't really you know i'm on facebook mostly for our group at this point yeah um but it's been 11 years since i knit my first sweater <gasps> really? i had posted it on facebook and that memory came up and it was so, like 11 years ago oh my god so 2012 
Would yep. it have been? Wow. Yeah, that was my first sweater. It was the Kate Davies owl sweater. Oh, that's awesome. That's yep. nice. I thought that. I'm like, that's such a nice thing to remember. Usually it reminds me of horrible dates. Yeah. Like, there's no filter on Facebook, so you right. can yeah sad memory after yeah it reminds you and you're like gee thanks yeah um, thanks but, for but that first sweater that was a good one that was a great one yeah well i just celebrated my anniversary too of um the longest night yeah. remember so that was 2011 so yeah i'm looking at uh 12 years yeah Ooh. since i got back to knitting what a lot has happened in 12 years right? for all of us i'm sure mm -hmm. 12 years is not a short amount of no, time it's not so great well well done marie this is lovely really so it's really not nice. my fo but she's been wearing it a lot i will I say that i have i love it mm -hmm. um i don't have any fo's do you have any fo's with you i do you i do? do i do they're blocked these are my Agatha socks knitted in Rambler, our own sock yarn, and they are finished except for that. And really, really uh, loving them. I love this pattern. It just is a very my my bestie um, Amber says that she loves the Agatha socks because they fit fit so well. Because I think there's a lot of stretch in the pattern, mm -hmm. and I think that's true. This is probably my eighth or ninth pair that I've ever knitted. Oh wow! Never gets board oh look i think i forgot to finish my uh Ooh. kitchenering tidy up so there is a little bit of work to do here that's a big loop from the kitchener so i need to pull it and fix all along there wow i just got excited and blocked these i think <laughs> what's funny is i went to the um the kitchen mm. here yes. and your, your her socks were blocking yes and i'm like that's hilarious <laughs> I think quite a lot of people noticed that there was uh, socks, socks in the sink. sink. Yeah. <laughs> well, why not? I spent it's, enough time it's here. It's a yarn store. It is a yarn store. So, yeah. Yeah. And then I've got a little mail bin that's mesh, and I put them on the blockers and hung them there to dry. I know. Josh came by. He touched it. He's like, it's wet. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, these are them, and we're going to have kits coming in the Rambler. Yeah. yeah. So, we're, we're, we're going to be celebrating our restock of Rambler. Um, we're going to have kits and a new course yes. for the Agatha socks. Yes. Um, we also have another new design coming. Yes. Um, uh, I can't say, say much more about that just yet, but there's another new design coming. In the Rambler. In the Rambler. Um, yeah, so big thing. So Rambler is coming soon. And, well, can I just say that I was just back there mm -hmm. and I saw this massive bag of yarn that had just arrived. Mm -hmm. And I, I put my hand in and I was like, oh, that feels really nice. Really, really nice. And then I caught that it was Rambler. I didn't know it was Rambler when I thought that. Yeah. And I was like, yes! Yes, yeah, it's, it's very good. exciting. Yes. Yeah, so we've got about half the yarn in. Yeah. Um, so we're waiting for all of it to yeah, arrive, and, then, and we'll, then we'll put it in. It's, so. it's wonderful. And this is the winter sky colorway. Yeah, I love that color. It's such a good color. So that is my FO. I have a couple of whips going, and that's about it. Well, here, well, why don't you show us uh, your whips? Um, Our okay. color work cal is underway. It I'm is. assuming you I have, have cast on. I have cast on. Yeah. I've even posted somewhere that I had cast mm -hmm. on. Yeah. So, but before I show you that, I wanted to show you um, knitting my daughter, um, or Dun Robin. Oh, okay. So, I, and this is in uh, the, what you call it? Studio Donegal, mm -hmm. Aaron Waite. I ball things up. I don't cake. I do it by hand. Whoops. And so here we go. I am up to where you separate the front and the back and I've knitted up the front. And you can see, um, this is the back I'm showing you. Or is it, is this the front? I can't tell. I think, yeah, this is the back I'm showing you. And you can see the little split there. There's another split so there. Um, and yeah, I knit, I knit from where I joined mm -hmm. the hem up to the armholes in an afternoon. Whoa! Because it's so chunky. So you just kept going around and around and around. It was fantastic. It was a great way to spend a quiet afternoon. I just got a sweater done. I mean, literally. So the next stage will be to do the shoulder shaping, front uh, front shoulder. Then I'll knit up the back and do the back shaping. And then we'll join the seams. This is being rigorously tested uh, by our test knitters. So thank you, test knitters. For sticking with it and getting it done, I mm -hmm. will have absolutely no qualms about the quality of this pattern yeah. once you're finished with it. Um, so thanks to them and um, their tenacity is noted and thanked mm -hmm. and uh, very grateful. And um, this will be released when it's ready, yeah. uh, which is coming up next month probably. 
Probably, yeah. Probably. Probably. We want to make sure it's right. So yeah. But it's going to take as long as it takes. It takes as long as it takes, but I'm enjoying knitting it. And of course, Maya is smaller than me, so it's a quick knit, never mind the fact that it's a... Uh, uh, an iron weight. Nice. Really nice to knit. Yeah, and if they wanted to see the finish, oh, um, yeah. it is behind you. So down the <laughs> sleeve. We've had so many good questions from the testers. First of all, when you're joining... Do, you wanna, do we want to move her to the middle? Okay. So, a few design points to share with you. Why not? We'll just take the mm -hmm. opportunity. Um, when you're joining the front to the back at the um, shoulder seam, you actually put the wrong sides together and do a three needle bind off. Typically, you would put the right sides together and then you would have an invisible seam. But we're putting the wrong sides together <clears throat> to create this uh, spine along the top. So that's on purpose. Another question the knitters had was to do with the small width of the sleeve hole. But <clears throat> it's a drop shoulder. So here's your shoulder up here. If we were making that the, the seam up here, you would need a bigger space, but because it's coming down your arm, you really don't need a lot of space. So don't feel like <clears throat> I would I would ask that people resist the temptation to make that bigger. You're going to change the whole look of the garment. So trust the pattern. Well, you'll you'll add you would add a bunch of extra fabric to gape. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So and yes, this is also out from your body as well. Right. So it trust the pattern we know what we're doing and also i'm a big armed girl and i fit in these tiny uh little sleeve holes very well the sleeve is meant to feel fitted and the body is meant to feel a little more loose and drapey so and then um the neckline i actually think i might uh unpick this and do another inch i think i'd like it to come up a little bit higher than it does but i haven't got there yet yeah. That, that's easy enough to personalize too if you yes. like a longer neck or shorter or if you just shorter. want a regular crew neck um and then the back here i might as well turn her around oh look at there's no gaping it fits now it fits me the model's a little bit bigger than me so it is a little bit tight there but on you it it will not be billowing out the back you know with tons of extra fabric like the black one did the first yeah. one i knit so I'm really super happy with this. It's a very elegant, simple design that I think um, is good for any any uh, level of knitter that you are. And I think it'll get worn a lot. I know I wear mine a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's that's her. So that's all I have to say about that for yeah. now. So that's coming soon. Yes. And we'll have kits. And um, we've done it in uh, Let Lopi and Studio Donegal are your choices on mm -hmm. the pattern. Do you want to show us what you have yes. as a whip right now? I do. I'm so excited. I had so much fun working on this this weekend. Mm. Um, it makes me want to buy Gobs more uh, JNS, which is just... Um, <laughs> So I started, um, I'm knitting the Braywick hat, which is on the cover of Milwaukee. You're on a Kate Davies. <laughs> I am on a, so Love it's that. actually designed by Ella Gordon. Oh, right. Um, but it's but, in her book. But it's in her book. Oh my um, gosh, this looks so good. So, <gasps> so I went, th thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, so here is what I have. So this is just since Friday and I actually Maggie. messed up and had to rip back a little because I'm me. Um, I got so excited to jump into the color work. I forgot Isn't to that... do an increase row. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to look back. Oh, um, but it's yeah, gorgeous. So, so, so I I wanted a darker main color. Yes. Um and but gorgeous. It's and it was so addictive. I was just like just just one more color, and then mm. each color is only like two or three rows. So next thing you know, Ella Gordon. Um, wow, just, wouldn't that be absolutely. nice as a sweater? I could see that as a little kid's sweater, like for Caitlin's <sighs> little ones. Just so pretty. <laughs> and then the crown of it has. Yeah. Oh, I've got to show you this. The crown has this gorgeous um, star. I don't want to show you the... No. There. This one. There you go. Look at that prettiness. So the, Let me oh, see. Isn't that pretty? The only thing I didn't account for is that my main color is going to be against every single one of these colors yeah. in the crown. And one of my colors in the middle there is a dark purple. And I know I won't have enough contrast. Uh, so I think I'm going to... Could you switch the order around? So I could... But either way, I think putting them next to each other won't work. So I'm tempted to... I have a tiny Change bit of just this random purple. Yeah. Um, I might just for the crown so that you see the star yeah. use a different purple. Yeah. I think now, did, how did you choose your colors? Um... I So I did choose the colors like based off of her okay. colors. 
Um, I just made, tried to, well, I thought I had made well, sure that they all had contrast. Okay, so, so I went with, um, like, she had two shades of blue. Okay. She had, like, a purple and then two pinks. Yeah. Um, I put my darker color, my darker red on the outside of the hers flower. Is on whereas the hers is on the I inside. I love what you've done, though. Um, yeah. And then, you still had to choose the right colors, though. I mean, you've you've chosen the same color family, but hers is knitted in her yarn. Yeah. So, so you had to interpret that into what you wanted yeah, to do. Yeah, so those were knit in Milwaukee. Yeah. Me, um, but I wanted to use JNS because I had it. And yes, I love it. It's gorgeous. Um, yeah, so I, love that and I happen to have these in my in my stash because I have lots of blues and reds and yeah. those grab bags come in handy. Grab bags, that's what I was going to say. Handy. So, um, yeah. so yeah, I think I'm just going to play around at the top of the crown and it'll be really good. So What's really amazing is that so far I've used one ball of each and actually the main color, which I think I'll probably have enough of, I had already started on this ball for something mm. else. Mm. Um, well, there's so much color work in it that you're sparing it. Yeah. yeah. I was really surprised even looking through the book. So many of them, you just need one yeah. of each. Yeah. I think, that's a, I think that's a function of all, you know, the background changing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so, yeah, I'll be done with this in no time. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I'm probably just going to keep going through the book at this point. And uh, <laughs> there's, there's so many good patterns in here. Yeah. Um, so I'll focus on the color work ones like I think oh, that one might be Diana nice. Wallace yeah, yeah that's a gorgeous one and even that one I love the little star on the head it just kills me yeah um and that one looking at that one it's one ball of each oh so I'm sure I can and there's your pure yeah. which we have kits for and yeah. Jameson and Smith. so many good patterns in there yeah. so um I, yeah, I'm I just see gonna I work my way through the book I'm a huge fan of two color type <clears throat> as well mm -hmm. that I love that well especially with so many fingering weight yarns yeah. or small amounts left over from yes. projects too. yes well good for you very lovely so, um yeah so. i'm seeing a lot of you knitting the flowers of fortreau's uh hat which is just really lovely it is yes it's, and it's fun i've been going through the facebook group and seeing the the kits that we put together and people knitting them up i know and then people going off and doing their own mm -hmm. colors i saw a beautiful pink one that was just like oh <laughs> made my hair sing it was really really nice and then i saw another one i think in rama using brown mm -hmm. as the main color and it was really lovely too so I, yeah, there was a, some discussion in our facebook group of could you substitute rama for the jns of course um, because it's slightly it is, it a is slightly, slightly heavier yes i mean you're going to end up with a slightly bigger <clears throat> hat but not so big yeah. i mean you know i think just uh watch your gauge as you're going around maybe go down a needle size or yeah. something that yeah. was sort of what we said mm, there you go so i'm knitting I cast on and then ripped out. Uh, I don't know where it is right now. I can't find it. Anyway, I started uh, knitting mittens that I am oops, designing to go with, there we go, to go with the Flowers of Four Trows hat. Now I'm doing this in different colors because I just wanted to knit in different colors. But um, yeah, so we're going to have mittens to go so with the cute. hat. Yes, yes. I just love knitting with Jameson and Smith. I love Rama too. They're my desert islands. But I love doing a corrugated rib. That's awesome and fun. I love doing this little curly, mm -hmm. you know, that's a really nice way to start a hem. And um, these flowers are just potato chippy. So that's what I'm doing. And hopefully next time we're together, we'll have more progress yeah. on that. But yeah, I did go up a needle size from what I started. That's why I did it twice. I started on a very much smaller needle. Now I'm up to US one. There, there. I was finding while working on my hat, there's something so satisfying about the woolly yarn in the color work mm -hmm. where it just really it nestles fills in. in yeah. And, um, yeah. It's it's meant for it, isn't it? It's just it's a perfect perfect pairing, yarn and design. <coughs> so yeah, um, stay tuned. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully that's they'll fun. get done. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. It's fun. So that's what I've been knitting on. Um, I finished my, yeah, I finished my socks. I've been knitting my uh, sweater and doing this. So nice. I feel like some knitting mojo is definitely back in with us, which that's is good. good. It's been a bit of a bit of a haul lately. Just you know, I mean, I've not ever stopped knitting, right? But some of it felt a bit worky, you know, and just oh, deadlines. And yeah. I'm not feeling that way at all. I'm feeling very much in you know enjoying my knitting, which is. Which That's is such good. a lovely thing. Mm -hmm. Before I cast on the hat, I was in a little bit of a funk. Yeah. Like I sat down with all my whips and I was working on them, but um, 
Yeah, I don't know. None yeah. of them were like. You needed just that little. I did. I, mean, I think I needed a, to switch gears a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah, which is why the the color work cal is really, mm -hmm. really nice if you're used to. Yeah, especially a lot these of are sweaters. nice. That it's fairly fast. Good time for some palette cleansers. Yeah, and then jump back to those whips. Yeah, so keep posting in the Facebook group and on Ravelry and on Instagram and everywhere because it is so fun to see you all knitting and yeah. uh, just seeing what you're knitting and how it's going. Love that. Yeah. Love that. So Maggie, now is time, I think, to go and visit with Kelsey. So mm -hmm. we'll see you on the other side. Hi, it's Kelsey. I'm just coming in to talk to you about a few things today um, that I've been knitting, that I've finished, that I'm still knitting, um, and uh, a yarn comparison that I've been asked about a lot in email. Um, so I wanted to come on and talk about it a little bit. Um, so the first thing is that I have finished these. <laughs> These are called the Telemark Socks. Um, they are from the Norwegian Socks book, which... Oh, no. What's it called? Socks from Around Norway. I should grab it. It's right above my head. Should have been prepared. But here it is. Socks from Around Norway. So, Carrie, they have a lot of socks in this book. I've talked about it before. Um, I've talked about it before, and it is a book with sock patterns that are inspired by socks that are found in some of the folk art con um, collections, sort of historical socks that have been collected in Norway over time um, and knitting sort of new patterns with those socks, new patterns for those similar socks. These are the Telemark socks. I showed this one completed before, I think. Um, these have since been blocked but not worn, so I find that they tend to sort of even out even more once you wear them. Um, but this is knit in our, actually our yarn, the Wooly Thistle Rambler, that we will be getting back in stock soon. Um, it's not in stock right now, but we're getting a new batch. Um, the colors are Lichen, which is a sort of light green, and Golden Fern, sort of mustardy, greeny, brown, gold color, which I actually really like a lot. Um, and I think they look kind of cool together. I talked about this before, but there's a little bit of a question of color dominance here, where I knit this one with the golden fern dominant, and I knit this one with the lichen dominant, and you can see the difference. Um, yes, the square, I reversed this, the motif as well, but I think it is even more pronounced. Like this one looks way more lichen then this one looks golden fern, if that makes sense. Like this one looks more balanced to me than this one. Um, so it makes the motif look totally different, which I think is very, very cool and very interesting. But yeah, I swapped sort of the heels and toes and cuffs and switched the color work. So just wanted to show that. I haven't worn them yet, but um, color work knit double, or color work is effectively knitting a double thick fabric because you're floating the other color behind. So. It's not as thin as a Rambler sock could be. So if you like really thin socks, Rambler is really good for that. But it's also good for color work because then you don't end up with an overly thick sock when you're knitting the sort of tight color work that ends up doubling, double thick, making, giving you a double thick fabric. So clearly I haven't even woven in my ends yet, but I will. But they're blocked and I'm pretty happy with them. I really like how they turned out. They turned out some very slightly different sizes, and I don't know if it's just because I took so long to do them that my tension was a little different, but um, it's fine. It works. The other thing I wanted to talk about is, if I can get it out of its of the bag, this sweater. Dun, 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 dun. So this I showed before. I, um, it was smaller. Not a lot smaller, but it was smaller. It is a, a men's sweater for my dad. It is a saddle shoulder construction. So you actually knit these two top rectangles and then you pick up the back and then you pick up the front. Um, you pick up the front after knitting flat for a bit to get this kind of shaping. Um, and I am marling Rama Finnelgarn. So it's a whole series of blues and greens, everything from kind of this kind of electric lime to some very light blues to some dark teals. What else is in this bag? Sort of heathered foresty color. Um, yeah, yeah. So like taking all these things, mm -hmm. Let me grab this one, and marling them. So marling being holding two strands together. Um, 
I'm knitting somewhere in the 1718 stitch gauge, um, which I think is going to be a nice, it's still flexible and still still thick, but it's it's fairly opaque and it'll be fairly warm without being hot, hot. Um, so yeah, I'm still trucking along on this. I don't have a plan. I just kind of knit a marl until I feel like changing a color. Like I've changed a few times in here in sort of shorter distances. Um, and I tend to change one instead of both because then you're getting both, you're getting a little bit more of a blended look. I changed, I did a little bit more of an abrupt thing there. I'm not sure if I like it, but I think it's gonna work and it'll be fine. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out is this is a top down knit in the round sweater but I did put in a faux seam on the side. It's actually two stitches instead of one, um, just so that it's centered. Uh, and something, so faux seams can both look like a seam, which is kind of a nice effect on the side of a sweater, but it also can help sometimes in twisting. So sometimes you'll have a stockinette fabric that will tend to bias a little bit or turn a little bit. So if you've ever had a sweater that you knit seamlessly and it felt like the bottom half kind of was shifting around your body, um, sometimes just having all knit stitches, knit stitches can tend to lean one way or the other if your attention is a little bit off, sort of left-handed to right-handed, and it can make your fabric also kind of lean on that diagonal, which over a whole fabric will make the fabric twist a bit. Um, this is different than the biasing that you can get from a single ply yarn. So single ply yarns have by definition, only twist in one direction, where if you go to multiple plies, they take plies that are twisted one way and twisted the other way, and, well, and then they twist the, tw the plies together. So it's more balanced, where most, a lot of single plies have more of an issue with that. So that twist can cause the, the sort of diagonal and the biasing. Um, I do have a pretty good swatch for that, but I'm not gonna dig it out. It's a little bit different in this case where it's just straight stockinette. So what adding this pearl seam faux seam is doing is sort of stopping that twist. It hits that seam and it won't twist as easily because it's not sort of leaning the same way because it's a purl stitch instead of a knit stitch, if that helps. Anyway, I've decided to try it on this big sweater. Um, I haven't really had trouble with it in the past, but I thought it would be fun. So, yep, sweater. And this is from Ann Bud's um, Top Down Sweaters book that we uh, do it normally carry the woolly thistle. I haven't checked if we have it right now, but it's a great, a great sweater resource because you can knit any, like there's a whole range of sizes, a whole range of gauges, a bunch of different styles, and you can kind of make it your own as you go. This is another thing I'm going to talk about. Um, we are, we started the woolly thistle um, accessory, color work accessory knit along last Friday um, when this is going, uh, when this video is being posted. And I just wanted to show this hat um, for a few reasons. One, it's made from Uridale, which is one of our Shetland yarns. It's um, organic Shetland yarn from um, Uridale Croft and some others on Shetland. So this is a bunch of different colors and I don't remember they what they are because I had a lot of little scrappy bits. And that's the second point of it. This is the um, Busta Beanie by Gudrun Johnston. Um, so the motif are these little triangles that are going, you know, go one way and go other way and then are connected with these diagonals in between. But as you can see, in different colors, you get really different effects for those triangles. So this motif is the same all the way up, this way, that way, this way, that way, this way. That way. But with different colors, you're getting different things. And what I did is I just knit, I knit this with scraps. So often you knew by a kit from us from a hat for a hat or something and it has six colors in it you're using very small amounts of those six colors because a hat is really not going to take more i mean i'd be surprised when a hat I'm, a, I'm usually surprised when a fingering weight hat takes more than like 50 grams of yarn even color work um total so if you have six different yarns and they're coming from 25 gram balls um it's sort of rare that more than that a color will require more than a ball or a full ball. Sometimes like the main color, a background color will be two balls. Um, but all those little bits and pieces all the way up um, will take far less than 25 grams. So what do you do with the rest of it? You could try to find another pattern that requires exactly the right amounts, or you can do something like this. I took a fairly simple color work motif in this hat, um, and it's great, it's very effective, it's very graphic, I like it a lot. 
and I just sort of changed yarns as I had yarns and as I felt like it. So this is gonna be funny because it's I'm pulling it way down on my face. But up here, I even sort of changed mid triangle because I ran out. I think it was the bluish color, the navy blue color that I ran out of. Um, but other times, like this purple, I had it here, I had it here, I had it here. The brown is say, the same here as it is up here. So, and the white is up there and there. So just kind of using bits and pieces as you have them. And you can come out with a really cool looking hat that looks like you did it on purpose, mostly, <laughs> um, without actually having done it on purpose and with using up all those bits. Uh, so that's, I thought, a fun thing that I wanted to share, um, especially if people a week or two or three into the cal are you know maybe done with their first hat that they wanted to to knit maybe they're done with their flowers of fort rose and they have all these extra the corinne's new hat pattern and you have these extra bits and pieces and what do you do with it well the busta knit scrappy i think is a really great option the other thing i wanted to show you that i finished is this shawl so this is the gaka or gasa g-a-c-a -A, shawl by Jean-Philippe Cliché. He's a designer out of Montreal. I showed this before when it was partially done, but this is done and blocked, and I'm happy with it. It's actually knit, um, knitting from two plates of manchalope at the same time. So this is the manchalope. This is what I have left over. The pattern calls for two plates total. Um, I knit it on a larger needle, which once you get up into the larger, it's, so it'll be a chunky weight, once you get up into the larger needles, going up a needle size goes up like quite a bit of width, width, thickness. Um, so I went instead of the pattern, I think called for a 15 and I used a 17 and that was two millimeters of difference. So I ended up with sort of a, a, an air, a sort of fluffier, probably, you know, a little bit holier, if you can see my finger, boom, boom, um, fabric, but it also made it a lot longer and also made it sort of wider. So I actually omitted the middle of the pattern. So you knit from this end to this end. Um, and I omitted the middle, I think 14 rows because it was just getting so big. Um, and I didn't really need it to be like gigantic big. Um, Cause I can already, you know, that's the inside, but. <laughs> I can already do one of these, which with plenty of tail which is plenty for me and plenty for Vermont. And um, it's really fluffy and stands up and it's really, it's really great. But my point being with my larger gauge, I cut out the middle, but I also went in, into a third plate. Um, so Manchalope comes off of the plate as a double strand. This is knit with two double strands. So it's four total strands. And I said this all in a previous um, shop cast as well, I believe. Um, but you, there's a worsted weight version where you knit a single double strand, so from one plate, but it still uses two total plates. Or the chunky version is you're knitting from both plates at the same time, but you're still only using the two plates. It's only because I modified the pattern and used a different um, needle that I went into this third plate. But I have no regrets. I really love the fabric. I really like how it is. I'm a tight knitter anyway, so I didn't want it to be like really constricted because that's the... That's the benefit of this kind of unspun fiber is it can real be really poof up um, and really take up some space. So I wanted to give it the the room to do that. So here I am, <laughs> which is why I'm also not wearing a sweater because I felt like if I did this, I would roast immediately. So the last thing that I wanted to talk about is in, uh, emails that I've been getting about Manchalope. So this is Manchalope by Wool Dreamers. Um, it's unspun fiber made from the Manchega sheep, which is the same, the same sheep as make you make Manchego cheese out of, out of the milk, um, from Spain. This is a lightly colored, I think this color was called green, but it's a very sort of minty light green. There's now a darker green that's more of a forest green that's available. But I've been asked a lot about the difference between this and this. This is Plotilope. This is Icelandic. It's a very light blue. Um, there's a similar blue in Manchalope, actually, but this is Plotilope, which is an unspun Icelandic fiber. It comes up, mostly comes off as a single strand instead of a double. You can knit it sort of to a similar gauge as the Manchalope, um, but again, with the unspun fibers, if you squish it or you let it breathe, it can you can really shift gauge quite a bit. Um, 
So you can knit with one strand of this, you can end up, you can sort of double strand pulling um, a length off and then pulling another length off. Um, what I wouldn't recommend doing with either of these is trying to pull from the middle because the unspun fiber is fairly um, fragile. So what I wanted to talk about is sort of pros and cons of the two of them. They're very similar in that they're both unspun, but if you kind of look at them, and maybe this is hard to see, maybe if I put my hand here. Um, the manchalope has more of like a cotton ball texture. It's sort of fluffier in a jumbled kind of way, where the plotulope has some more hairiness to it. If you can see that, you can see some of those hairs coming off. The difference between those two. Maybe it's better to see in the plate. You can even see it on the edges of the plate there versus this. It doesn't look that hairy. Um, so it's a similar, it's the same fiber as in, as in let lopi or alifos lopi. So these are those same hairs that you get in that, those hairier yarns. Um, I'd say that let lopi, no, plochilopi is a bit denser than manchilopi. It's just, this is a bit fluffier, a bit more cotton ball. Um, generally would say that it's a, it's a bit softer next to skin. Um, this is fine if you're good with let lopi. Um, if you're not good with let lopi, you're not going to be good with this right next to your skin. It's great for like loose sweaters and other and socks and other things, um, but it's going to have those same qualities. They're sort of caked up a little bit differently. As you can see, it's sort of a very thick versus sort of a thinner plate. These are both 100 gram plates. This one is a full 100 grams and this one is about 60 grams because I used up some of it. So you can see how much poofier the manchalope is. Um, I would say the manchalope actually is a little more fragile, like it's a little bit easier to pull that apart um, in the manchalope than in the plotulope, you know. Um, they both spit splice or wet splice back together, so this is the plotulope. It just takes a tiny bit more work, tiny, like you can barely tell when I just did that, but you can also see how much hairier it is. Um, to pull them apart. So the major differences are kind of the puffiness of the manchalope and then the feel, um, the next to skin kind of feel. This does have that sort of Icelandic sort of hairier um, yarn feel and this is definitely puffier and um, more cottony um, but in a good way if that's if that's a thing. Um, but I just wanted to show them side by side for those who had questions about them. Well, that's all for me today. I'm going to take this off because it is warm in here. Um, but <laughs> thanks for coming by. Uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the Shopcast and I'll see you next time. Yep. So Kelsey is awesome. She did a great job with that. We have glass doors, windows yeah, here. There's movement. There's lots of people just walking around. It's a busy shop, it isn't is, it? it is. um, anyway, back to uh, Kelsey does a great job. Thank you, Kelsey, for showing us the Plotilope and Manchalope. Uh, differences mm -hmm. and um, I like seeing her boost of uni too. Oh, it's gorgeous! That yeah, she that did that one of my first color work projects. Was, was it boost of uni? Yeah, um, I've knitted that a few times. It's, it's very fun, really um, addictive. Easy. Four pattern repeat, a four stitch repeat. So it, doesn't it was get a much great better. first color work pattern, especially you don't have to worry about floats or catching floats nope. or anything. Yep. You just you just very go. potato chippy, and mm -hmm. you can change it up the whole way through, or you can go very monochrome. It's a great pattern. That's, mm -hmm. you know, if ever you need to knit a hat for someone as a gift, that's a great one because yeah. they'll wear it. It looks really good. Yeah, yeah. And very, and no matter who you're giving it to. Yeah. Um, uh, it's very unisex. Looks yep. great on anyone. Yep. 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 So thank you, Kelsey. Appreciate that. And the color work Kel is well underway now. We're a weekend. Yeah. We're a weekend, but it's not too late to join us. Sign up is still open on the website. Yep. Um, and when you sign up, you do get a free copy of the Flowers of Fort Rose hat, which you can see right over there. Yep. Yeah, so definitely join in. Don't feel like it's too late. We want, you know, the more the merrier and um, we want you to knit with us. So come mm -hmm. on in. Grab whatever stash you have. That does prompt me. Um, If you're a crocheter, you're welcome to join yes. us. So we actually have in yes. the shop. Can I show this? Yes. Um, We actually have this new book in the shop, which is uh -huh. Colorful Crochet Knitwear. It's um, pretty. And our, um, one of our packers here. Ruth. Ruth crocheted this hat. I absolutely love it. Um, Isn't that amazing? It's nice and squishy, squishy, squishy. squishy. <laughs> um, but it uses, um, she used Retrosaria Mondine, which is what the pattern calls for. It looks for. so fluffy and plump, doesn't yeah. it? It's just absolutely wonderful. Yeah, this is crochet. 
it's it looks it looks similar to a knit stitch. It doesn't look quite like a knitted stitch, but very similar. Yeah. But um, crochet color work, wow. Yeah, and she did yeah. it really fast. Yeah. And that's what this book is. I mean, sweaters. Mm -hmm. I love that people are crocheting more sweaters, moving away from even, you know, the granny square. Nothing wrong with the granny square. I love a good granny square. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but even just looking at the cover, looking at that sweater. But I think crochet. just realizing how much you can do with crochet. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of these patterns use nice woolly yarn. So you can on the see back. more on the back, too. Yeah. So, so I think these mittens actually go with the hat. Yeah. So if you're a crocheter and want to do some color work. Yeah, there's a lot of green. Come on in um nice yoked sweater there yeah yeah love Just it wonderful Maggie. and some of these i had not tried i've not tried some of these like i've not tried mosaic crochet i am um, i have done intarsia i did it when i was about 16. <clears throat> um you oldies who have been with us a long time the og will remember my story about knitting a sweater from here across here bat wings in the yeah. 80s i was 16. that was intarsia it was amazing it was amazing all i remember though i i knit the whole thing back and front was all right across like a bat wing and uh but i ran out of steam i did not knit the neck band <laughs> I was just you like, made yeah. it right to the finish Yeah, line. I didn't need a neck band. I just yeah, said. <laughs> but yeah, that was intarsia. And because I didn't know it was called intarsia or that it was, you know, anything right. to be worried about, I just did it. I And I wish I had it now. I would have loved to see it now. Yeah. Who knows? It's in a landfill somewhere. Because it wasn't wool. I'm sure it was acrylic. Yeah. yeah, I mean a lot of those first projects. Yeah, yeah, but it was uh, it was very Miami Vice inspired. The pastel colors, baby pink, baby blue, baby yellow. You would have fit in in like the wedding singer. Yes, yes, the hair and everything. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, God, that seems like a long time ago, which it is. But anyway, yeah. So Antarsia, I would like to try that again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I started actually. I got the uh, you know it's one of those languishing whips. Um, <coughs> Sorry, it's a blanket. Yeah. Um, and it looks it uh, when you put the squares together, you make the squares. But the squares are done with intarsia, and they kind of do this yeah diamond. thing to it. Uh. But when you put it together, it makes a star. Okay. So you've got four of them. Yeah. Um, and I was doing it out of hand spun, so it'll make a blanket. Oh, beautiful! This is the only way I can finish blankets is modular, basically, where you put squares together. <laughs> um, not a bad plan. It's not a bad plan. It was a lot of fun, and it was it's intarsia. Mm. Um, yeah, I think I think there's definitely room for exploration yeah. there for sure should we announce another winner we should announce another winner before we just keep rambling and rambling number two along. number two is anita thiernan um okay. anita says dear rachel yes please let those of us who are able to show support for the amazing work you do yes um you provide a wonderful and informative glimpse of life into a place i'm interested in but not likely to ever be able to visit Know that you have a whole community of us who are rooting for you, who admire you, and who appreciate the work you do. Take care. Oh, well said, Anita. Anita, thank you. I completely you. agree. Anita, email us at info at the woolly thistle and put prize winner in all caps and we will get you your $25 gift card. Hooray, Anita. Thank Yay. you. Thank you for watching, <clears throat> commenting, and supporting Rachel mm -hmm. and just being an all-rounder all round wonderful thistler thank yeah. you so much and yes we'll get that out to you as soon as you email us yeah fabulous so, so maggie what do we have this new and exciting in the shop right now so coming today at noon mm -hmm. um, very special time, are these very special yarns mm -hmm. from black isle yeah we have not had yarn in the shop from black isle um outside of a selection box in a very long time so this is super special and available to everyone yes so Mm. So this one here is her, let me get it right. Frosch. This is Frosch, or maybe Froch, but we'll go with Frosch. <laughs> and um, Black Isle, of course, Black Isle Yarns is Julie, who lives in Fort Rose, by the way, on the Black Isle. I named my hat Fort Rose because that's where my granddad lived. So I visited uh, Julie when I've been home, and she's lovely. And she goes around the Black Isle collecting up wonderful uh, very local wool from the various farmers and actually on here it even tells you where the wool came from and then she has it made up and it's a uh, all scottish and it's lovely yeah so, so frosh is a fingering weight yarn and it's gorgeous it's uh let me just tell you it's 320 meters per 100 grams so it looks like a light fingering to me mm -hmm. <coughs> and it is 75 percent shetland and gotland it says with a hint of Shetland and Charolais. 
Mm -hmm. at Shower 25%. Line. Yeah. Gorgeous. Julie, um, if you want to tell us the correct way to pronounce it, I'm thinking froch, but maybe not. Um, and then also available new today um, is a DK weight yarn called Ball Blair. Ball Blair. Oh, this is Beautiful. squishy too. It's lovely. Of course, we've got Katie Greenbean's little mm -hmm. drawing on the back. And this is 65% Gotland and 35% blue face luster right so it's got a plumpness in it from the blue flake oh, blue face so nice and the gotland oh vegetable matter vegetable matter right there can you see i love that and i'm gonna tuck it right in 85 meters it's both of these are very soft aren't they this, yes. they're natural this, this one you could just bouncy yeah just beautiful they're natural they're different weights they're different um makeups uh, but we got both of them so that we would have enough for everybody who's going to want this. Yeah, so these are limited. Very limited. Very small quantity. Very small quantity. Together, more of a chance that you, that you can get what you want. Mm -hmm. um, yes, it's lovely. And it smells good. <laughs> so we have that going live today, Maggie. Yes, today at noon. Mm -hmm. And um, good luck to you. Um, we yeah. do have a fair amount because we doubled up but we think this will go pretty fast mm -hmm. yeah very special yeah very very special and lovely awesome. so let's go visit emma now who is talking color work and we'll see you on the other side sounds good hi everyone i'm emma and i'm coming to you from very rainy baltimore maryland today and yeah it's really it's gross outside but it's not too cold so that's good and i'm here to talk about some color work accessory stuff so we're now a whole week into the color work accessory cow which is very exciting and I hope everyone has um, has like you know started their projects and they're all underway so I'm going to show you a couple of things that I'm working on one is a little bit in progress it's still towards the beginning and then another one I haven't cast on yet but by the time you're watching this hopefully I have so um, okay so the first one is a cowl and I'm actually knitting another version of this cowl. So this is not a pattern that's available. It's a design that I did a couple of years ago. And so one of my intentions of 2023 for knitting is um, that I would like to knit second samples of some of the experimental color work patterns that I've done and write them up into real patterns. So that's one of my projects for this year. So I'm going to take this off to show you some of the motifs. So this is just a, I showed this last time when I was talking about um, colors and how to put colors together, but this is a Mobius twist cowl, um, similar to Vari by Gudrun Johnson or um, the Kuvel by MJ Mucklestone, which is in Fair Isle Weekend. Or there's other ones like um, Andrea Mowry has one called Velvet Mirror that she does with Surrey Alpaca. Um, the Farmer's Daughter's Fibers, Candace English, she has one called the Auntie's Cowl. They're all kind of similar. And you can, uh, you know, you can, you can try one for yourself. So the first one I knit was not my own design. It was the MJ Mucklestone version from Fair Isle Weekend. And then I, once I kind of had the shape down, I thought, you can put anything on this cowl. So I did. So I've got some Oxos here and here, traditional Fair Isle motifs. And then I've got stylized Oxos here and here. These are all blues. And then I've got the same Peary in between each one. The Peary is the little one. So I've got that in between each one. And as long as the stitch counts all go into the final count of the, um, the, the whole thing, it's gonna work out. So I would recommend choosing stitch patterns that have numbers in common. So like my big um, pieces here, these Oxos, those are 28 stitch repeats. And the small, these ones, the smaller motifs, so this one and then the star here, those are 14 stitch repeats. So two of these go into one of these, which makes it easy. So also perfect thing to style a color work cowl with is a vanilla sweater. Um, so yeah, just like you always see the tapestry cowl beautifully styled with a vanilla sweater. Here you go, styling mine with a vanilla sweater as well. This one's knitted in tuka wool in the green color, which I think is called Leto maybe, I'm not sure. Anyway, this is just tuka wool fingering, beautiful color, love it. Um, so I'm knitting another one. <laughs> That's all to say. I'm knitting another one in a little bit of a more um, fun color palette, like slightly different. So I've chosen blues and also pinks and purples. So my color advice last time was, you know, stick with one, 
palette, like monochrome is one great idea. You could do monochrome with a pop. Um, this some something that Kelsey said, I think, was that somebody said it, I think it's Kelsey, <laughs> that um, Gudrun Johnston's patterns often have two different color groupings of, um, of uh, yarn. <laughs> two different color groupings in the in the pattern and so um that's what I did here I chose two colors and they kind of do watercolor into each other a little bit but I just chose two light pinkish purple ones and then a light blue and a white and then for my kind of foreground colors I got purple a kind of mauvey pink um and then two blues so again there's just some contrast sort of between the two color groupings more than anything else. But as long as you're, um, you're always making sure that your foreground and background colors contrast with each other, you can kind of try anything you want. So I would recommend just diving into one of those grab bags and having fun. So yeah, I'm doing a little bit something different here um, and I'm excited to see how it turns out. So I'm also gonna talk about something that I'm, I'm planning to knit. So I love to knit um, color work hats as well. And I like to knit hats to play with colors because hats are small projects that don't take a lot of yarn. So if you've got leftover bits and bobs, you can usually knit a hat or 10 from your bits and bobs. <laughs> as long as you have one, I mean, I usually use one background color just to kind of tie it all together um, to make it easier for me to pick colors by having one background and not having to worry about the shifting colors in the background. It just helps me um, better find colors that I, you know, I can experiment with. So. What I'm talking about is hats like this. So a Shetland hat. Um, this one is the Nighthawk skull cap from Shetland Wool Adventures Journal, Volume One. This one's got corrugated rib, two oxos here. You've got a band in the middle, and then you have a Shetland star crown. I love these star crowns. Um, and you can, you know, see similar hats. Kareen just designed the, um, yeah, her her new one. Um, the Flowers of Fort Rose hat. And she um, has a kind of similar style, although her crown shaping is built into the color work, I think. So, um, or you can knit her Balboni bonnet as well, similar kind of style. So these are great. I love to experiment with um, different color patterns like I did on this cowl and like I often do um, on other things. And um, I think that the hat is a great place to do that because if you have a pattern that you like, um, you can sort of start to modify it. And so I really like these star crowns. So I know that if I get to the right number of stitches, I can knit a star crown in any beanie that I'm just experimenting with. Um, and this is not my, my type of pattern. So I would not like write up a pattern based on this with the crown that somebody else designed, but when I'm just experimenting for myself, trying out different colorways, um, it's a great kind of way to experiment. So I am going to knit a hat with um, just this oatmeal base color. All of these are basically two ply jumper weight or similar from Jameson and Smith. So if you're looking to get some yarn to experiment with, grab bag is a great place where you can just um, pick some colors from the woolly thistle and, you know, go crazy. So oftentimes I recommend that people will get a ball of Jameson's jumper weight supreme because, um, or Jumperweight Supreme. Yeah, Jumperweight Supreme, because those are the undyed colors and they come in slightly larger balls. So those are 50 gram balls, which just means that you'll, you won't run out of the main background color because usually you need right around 25 grams of the background color for that. So having an extra on hand is helpful. Or if you've got a cone, you can knit off the cone or you can get a Supreme Jumperweight ball, up to you. Or you can play yarn chicken and just have one. <laughs> but I don't like to do that. So this time for the foreground colors, I chose, I wanted to experiment with something a little different. So I chose first, I chose my pop and I chose this very tomato red color and this is a Jameson and Smith color, but all the ball bands are gone. So can't tell you specifically what this is, but it was in my stash. Um, and then to go around it, I picked these four colors and they don't all match as well as something that I would have shown you the last time. Like there's definitely a more of a, an experimentation here with this. But so what I've done is I chose the red, orange, and brown all go kind of together in this, um, you know, this order. <laughs> they kind of 
go into the same family. The burgundy also is kind of in the same family as the reds and the browns, but I chose the burgundy and the and the blue to kind of go around this brown because they're kind of like the darker jewel tony um, ones, and then this one's gonna go right next to the the center of the motif, and then this is gonna be the center. So these are kind of my extra fun parts, and then there's kind of just like a little bit more of a muted background. So we'll see, maybe it will look terrible. <laughs> and um, one th of the ways that I check to see if the colors will go well together is that I knit them in the order I'm gonna put them on the hat, like in the motif, I knit them in that order in the corrugated rib brim. So I will knit these colors in probably blue, and then burgundy, then brown, then the orange, then the red, all against the background of this oatmeal. And then I'll see kind of what the progression of the colors looks like in order, you know, darkest to brightest. And then I'll knit the hat in the same order. So of course in the progression, it's only gonna go one way. It's not gonna go back because that'd be a really long brim unless you did um, like only one color in each or one round in each color, but I don't usually do that. So anyway, I'm excited about that. Um, if you wanna, I will uh, show this hat hopefully completed next time I'm on the Shopcast, but if you want to follow along, um, you can watch my show Tiny Desk Knitting on YouTube where I um, have an episode every week and hopefully I'll have some progress done the Tuesday after you see this episode. And so you can check out how far I've gotten in this hat. Maybe it'll be done, who knows? Depends on how much I get done this weekend. Technically I'm recording this on cast on day. So yeah. So I have one other thing to share with you and that's that I have released my Jane Bennett sock pattern. And one of the things, or yarns that I knitted it in is Rama Funnel, or Rama Fondre sock yarn. And this was um, the set that I got in my sock bag last summer. So the pink, I had two skeins and then the kind of creamy oatmeal color had one skein. And so I had plenty for the whole socks and heels, toes and cups in the contrast color. And I knitted this pair of super cozy house slippers. So I always knit my patterns in both DK and fingering weight. And this, for these bigger house socks, I followed the DK weight pattern, but they were a little thicker than DK weight because the yarn was more of a worsted. So these are kind of like house slippers. They're very, very stiff and cozy and warm. They will definitely keep out a chill. If you live in a cold place, Baltimore's not so cold, but I definitely enjoy, um, enjoy kind of wrapping up in wool when it does get chilly in the house. So there's just a, a kind of feathery lace pattern on these. And on, especially in the DK version, it goes really fast. Um, so I also have several samples of in the fingering weight version as well. So this is what it looks like in the fingering weight. This is a hand dyed yarn that um, I created a few years ago, but I was thinking if you wanted to knit the fingering weight version in yarn from the Lily Thistle, especially from your sock bag, if you have this Jagger's Fun, where you want to get some, um, this is a super great option because it's a similar kind of smooth worsted spun, but it's still all wool. I'm so excited to knit with this yarn. Um, and it's super wash treated, so you can throw these in the wash. So yeah, and I was also really inspired to see that Caitlin knitted a baby sweater with this yarn. I thought about doing that, but then I thought I'll knit socks. So I'm sure I'll knit another pair of my, my upcoming sock patterns in this yarn. And every time I release a sock pattern, I will have a woolly thistle sample yarn sample. <laughs> Wooly thistle sample. So yeah, I'm so excited to share these with you. Um, and um, you can get kits at the Wooly Thistle. So that's very exciting. You get the pattern and the yarn. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you next month. Bye, happy knitting. We hope we know you have enjoyed Emma. Thank you so much, Emma, for being with us. I love her new sock pattern. Yes, um, knitted in that lovely- um, Bondra. Yes, yes. yes. But also, I think she's writing it for... Jane Bennett. There we go. I was having a moment where I'm like, what is the name of it? It's Jane Bennett. Her Jane Bennett socks. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely lovely. Looks great in fingering weight, weight yes. or DK. Yes. Um, so it would be perfect for Riddler. Yeah. We are working on putting kits together um, that'll have Vondre yarn and the pattern and a cute little tote. Yeah. Um, and speaking of totes. Totes. These are doing... People are loving these. <coughs> yes. Which we're so um, happy about. Yeah. So our small tote. And you'll now see the large tote also has... Has 
the if you go out take your knitting oh, I just, um so yeah we saw on facebook um somebody i don't remember your name um that you brought your tote to your chemo appointment yes and um and you said when you go to chemo bring you your take knitting. your knitting and yeah. um i just we it touched us all and we're glad that we could have a little part of being there with you to support you through your yes. chemo yes um so just wishing you we're well for and, you and um yes yes I'm glad you have your knitting. Yes, exactly. So, um, but yes, yeah, so now any of the small totes going out with kits and the large tote going out with kits all have the if you go out Hooray. take your knitting and, on, and the, yes, logo the logo on the, on the other side. side. So we hope you enjoy so, those. That's fun. Yeah. Um, what is that you've got in your hands there? So we have a few new things in the shop, and this is one of them. Um, it is Unraveling by Peggy, Peggy Ornstein. Um, and it just looks like a fascinating read. I've been yeah. seeing it all over. Um, it talks about her journey um sh from shearing to dyeing and spinning yarn to making what she calls the world's ugliest sweater um and it just looks like a delightful read yeah. I, have, I have not yet cracked open a copy but yeah um, I planning will. to yeah for sure yes um, so these are in the shop now yes maggie i am loving my tote yes this is my new one it's in the woolly thistle purple color mm -hmm. and um my dog does keep you know, rubbing up against yeah, it. Yes, so you got a little, you got little dog hair. Bella. Yeah, Bella, Bella Fuzz. But these bags are enormous. I still use, this is my knitting bag. I'm keeping this one for knitting. My black one that I've had for several years um, is still my daily bag. Yeah. And I put in my massive um, laptop in there and my lunch and I have my knitting papers. in my gray one, yeah. which is at home because they're whips at this point. Yeah. Um, but just such a nice bag. And uh, you've seen this before. We've shown you before. Uh, we wanted to remind you that we have these. Um, we will not have these again for quite a while. So this mm -hmm. is sort of a grab it now or maybe lose out, which would be yep. too bad. Um, the purple is Harris Tweed, and it has the official Harris Tweed label on it, which is very, very special. Harris Tweed is made by people living on Harris in their homes, usually, uh, well, always on a hand-powered loom. Mm -hmm. There's no, you know, there's no um, power being put to it, except maybe <coughs> um, their own... <coughs> They're on human power, man power. That's where that comes yeah. from. So very special um, and beautifully woven, hand woven fabric. Yeah. Um, and it's got a nice emboss, embossing on the leather there, which has Studio Tolsta and the Woolly Thistle. And inside there's another label, which is really nice. That's the Woolly Thistle and Studio Tolsta. Yeah. So it's a, it's a collab with them, which... Which I think is really working out nicely, and mm -hmm. thanks, thanks to everyone who has bought them on pre-order. Yeah, what are they? Are they here now? They are not here now. They have shipped. We thought they would be here by now, but um, there was just a slight shipping delay, so they are on their way. By the time you're seeing this, they may <coughs> they may well be here because we're recording this at the beginning of the week. Yeah, so they may well be here. Um, at which point, um, when you place your order, you will get it shipped out to mm -hmm. you right away. Yeah, and yeah. if they're if they're not here yet, they'll be here any day. Yeah, and there's black up there. That's like my daily bag, and then the gray one, the charcoal. Have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. The black one's the charcoal. The right? that one's charcoal. Yeah. Yes, and you have gray, which mm -hmm. is the light gray, and the purple. Yeah. 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 So All beautiful. Very beautiful. Very very useful. Those straps have lasted. A long time with me carrying a lot of stuff in that bag. That computer is heavy. So yeah. um yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so there's still some in the shop right now, but they won't last long, so head to the shop now. Yeah. And we don't know when they'll be back. So I know, exactly. All right. What else do we have going on? Um, so let's see, what else do we have we going on? Marie Wallen's new book. Westmoreland. Yes, Marlin. Westmoreland came in. So you should have received your orders. Um it's a beautiful book with beautiful designs. And it if is. you've missed the last episode, please go back and watch. There's a whole interview with Marie where she walks us through all the designs. She holds, holds them up and shows them. Yes. And it's really nice. Uh, we only have the book. Uh, well, we do have yarn, but we don't have kits from the book yet. Right. Those are coming. Um, <laughs> there's just so much demand at the mill that yes. we're, we're sort of waiting for the mill to finish doing what they're doing. Of course, her yarn is milled at John Arbin which is a wonderful mill and, um, you know, good things take time. So we will yeah. definitely alert you when the kits arrive. But as of yet, the yarn's not here. Right. But it, um, it We do have a lot of yarn in stock. So if you wanted to get the yarn that you could. Yep. Um, Make your own kit. Yep. 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 We're happy to help with that. Yep. Um, just send us an email. Yep. For sure. For sure. 
So coming to the shop very soon, along with a top up of all of our favorite Retrozaria yarns, is Retrozaria Mungo, which is a 50-50 cotton wool blend made with recycled wool and cotton. And um, it's a worsted weight, perfect for spring and summer knits. That's why we're getting this in, is mm -hmm. for that cotton content to yeah. maybe cool things down if it's warm where you're going to be. Yeah. Um, we thought we'd give this a go. It's actually really nice. It's like it's like all their yarns. It feels that sort of spongy, um, very plump. Yeah, you still have that little bit of bounce from the wool, yeah. um, but the cotton, I think, will just make it uh, even extra breathable. Like, yes. it's very breathable, but... And we are getting all the colors <clears throat> of the line mm -hmm. in. Yeah. Will that be in when they see this today? Um, it won't be in, but it, it will, it'll be in soon. Um, it's on its, its way. Yeah. Um, so we wanted you to know once it gets here. So you can be on the lookout. Um, get on our newsletter. We'll let you know as soon as it arrives and is available in the shop. Very um, cute. And yeah, there's some really nice pattern support for this too. Hohi has a super, I think it's called Super Simple Summer Sweater. <laughs> Um, and it's just got big stripes and it's just absolutely yes. gorgeous. And I think you're right. I think the flex, the tweedy, um, is the cotton, mm -hmm. which is really, really nice. Yeah. Yeah. I like, I like that sort of. Yeah. And then they have some colors that are marled. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah there's going to be, soon. we'll have everything here and that'll be, that'll be in soon. Great. Yeah. So start planning those warm weather knits. Yes, for sure. Oh, that, that's nice. Even on it. It yeah. is, yeah. 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 Um, what else have we got, Maggie, that's coming? Um, um, I did want to give a shout out to um, the Muisto Kits. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but that's how Sounds I've been good. saying it. Muisto Kits. Um, it is a beautiful color work hat and mitten set. We'll put a picture there. These are only available in the shop through February. Um, which and is after now. that, which is now. So um, you've got like through the weekend and then that's it. Um, the pattern is no longer available to us. So this kit, we have kits in the shop. Um, and they come with everything you need, yarn, uh, tote, everything but needles, uh, yarn, pattern, tote, and, um, we've the, sold a fair few of we've them. We've sold a fair few of them. It's a really beautiful pattern. Yeah. Um, it's a great way if you've not tried to could DK, uh, but it's been on your list. This is a great way to yeah, try it. Sample it. Yes. Um, and you'll want to knit with it more. It is a wonderful yarn. Yeah. Um, but it's only available through February. After that, the pattern will no longer be available to us. And right now the pattern is not even on Ravelry. Right. Um, I'm checking with Tuku to find out. Right. Um, so don't delay. If yep. this is something you'll want to knit, go ahead and get the kit now. Also very excited about Bishi Bush's new yarn that's coming. Mm -hmm. They're going to be doing a sock yarn, which yeah. is super exciting. We'll have it in. Mm -hmm. When do you think that's coming? Um, we've already ordered it, so we're just waiting for it to arrive here in the shop. Yes. So yeah, and it's so going to be things. it's going to be a marl. <clears throat> Yeah, yarn. and they're, the, all the colorways are marled. And, and, and it does have nylon. I think it's an 80-20 mm -hmm. uh, blend. Yeah. So very excited for that. We'll be looking forward to that. Yeah. Um, Maggie, should we announce our third winner? We before, should And then go over winner. to Knitting Yoga with Kim. Perfect. All right. That sounds good. So go ahead. Uh, wait. Let's see. Yeah. All right. So our third winner for today is Kristen Donovan. And Kristen says, I'm blown away by all the beautiful yarns you carry. Each time you show a different yarn, I think, I want to try that. Me too. <laughs> um, I always enjoy hearing for your contributors. Thanks for all you do. Thank you, Kristen. So if you can email us at info at the Woolly Thistle, we will get you your $25 gift card. Congratulations. All right. I think that's three winners. That is three winners. We did it. <laughs> we made it through all the winners. So long as that, so long as we did that, this was a success. Yes. Um, okay. And let's go and do some yoga with Kim. Uh, she's going to limber you up. So make sure you join along. And I think all that's left to say is if you go out, take your knitting and we'll see you next time. Bye. Hi there and welcome back to Yoga for Knitters. My name is Kim and I am a knitter and a yoga teacher based in central Alberta in Canada. And I'm a fellow Wooly Thistler, so I'm happy to be a part of this big online family with you. Today's yoga class is all about the hips. Uh, we do a lot of sitting when we knit, don't we? I mean, probably like 99% of us that knit do it while sitting. So do you sit like this? Like this? Like this? 
like this. No matter how you sit, the muscles get bunged up. You know, some of the muscles are too tight from sitting like our hip flexors. Some of them maybe are too loose and they just don't move. So what happens is you get stiff, tight hips. Over time, that can cause pain, issues, reduce mobility, all sorts of bad stuff. So we want to get into the hips, move the hips around so that we can keep sitting and knitting. Let's do it. So for today's practice, we will be using a strap. Any strap will do. And a block. Okay, let's get started on our blocks. So you have a choice. We're gonna get into the hips and we're gonna explore all the different ways they move. So let's start by sitting on the block rolling the hips in until the thighs touch together and the feet are out. So we've got like a, oh, I don't know what degree that is, 20, 30 degree bend at the knee. The thighs are rolling in, the calves are rolling out. And if that feels really easy for you, like, oh, this block is, is kind of taking the fun out of it, you can get rid of the block and sit right down on the mat. Or the opposite, if you need a little bit more height, you can either do two blocks or you can sit way up on a stacked block. Just find the height that works for you. I'm gonna sit just on the, on the low setting here. Okay, thighs together and calves rolled out. We're just gonna do a little stretching. So inhale the left arm up and then reach it over to the right. Inhale both arms up and reach the right arm over to the left. Inhale both arms up and then if you have a cat in front of you, snuggle your cat as you reach forward. Inhale up, hands behind you. Open the heart up to the sky and then back to center. So we'll do that again. Left arm up and over to the right. Both arms up and over to the left. Both arms up and fold forward. Sit up straight and then reach back. Good. So we've got a little bit of heat going and we're just a little bit more limber now. Excellent. All right, we'll take that block out. You're going to take your right leg back and bend your left knee. Take as long as it you need to to get into this position so that your ankle is underneath your knee and then that right knee is a little further back. So we have about a 45 degree angle here at the hips. Then reach up, so the torso is lifting up to the ceiling. You can either keep that right back foot flat or bent, and then scoop the hips forward. So now we're stretching through the front gate here. You can keep your hands on your knee or reach them up. You keep scooping the hips forward. Good, just breathe deep, breathe low and slow. Long, deep breaths. This isn't a race, you just wanna feel good. Then stay here if it feels good for you, or you can take that right hand back, bend that right knee up, and come into a quad stretch, optional. We were already stretching through, <coughs> stretching through part of the quad in our low lunge. So this is an additional but not essential stretch. Good. Release it. We're going to slide the hips back, lengthen the left leg so that it's nice and straight, and then hinge over so that we're getting a stretch through the hamstring. Just breathe low and slow, long and deep. 
and marinate in this. In this. So you want to always be working at around a six, six out of ten. So you don't want this to hurt, but you want to feel something, right? Six, a level six of effort. I also like to call it sweet discomfort. Let's switch sides. So bring that left leg back, slide the right leg forward, place the right knee over your ankle, and the left leg is about 45 at the hip. Then squeeze up. Choose the foot position that works best for you. Feeling the stretch through the front gate and then reach the arms up if that feels all right. Personalize your practice. It's your body. So what anyone else is doing is completely irrelevant. All that matters is that you're working to your six, you're not feeling any pain, and you're there listening to what your body needs today. If you want to take that left leg up into the quad stretch, go ahead. Big deep breaths. Let your breathing muscles get into the hips because after all, everything is connected. Good. right onto our backs. You're going to grab your strap. Okay, let's try the first one without a strap. So you're going to bring your left knee in, give it a nice big hug, and just stretch that left right leg away from you. You're probably not at a six right now, and that's okay. Just be here and enjoy it. Breathe into the back of your thigh. <sighs> Excellent. Okay, now we're going to bend at the knee, move the thigh outside the frame of the body, and then reach up for the outside of your left foot. So this is a half happy baby if you're aware, if you know, if you know your yoga poses, you've probably done this one before. A half happy baby. So we're using your left arm to pull the knee towards the floor. The right leg is still nice and straight and there is a lengthening through the front of the leg, right hip and the back of the left leg. Awesome, awesome. Feels good. Long, slow breath. We're going to bring that leg back over. Grab your strap. Strap along the ball of your left foot and push it away from you like that so that there's action moving into the strap from your leg and then your arms are working to hold the strap against the push of your leg. Okay? Then start to move the leg towards you until you find your six. Stay there. If the six dissolves and gets a little light, you know, maybe moving into a five or four. Then take another millimeter and bring the leg towards you. If your right hip wants to pop up and roll, then you're going to just hold on to the strap with your left arm only. Take the right hand and push that hip down so that both hip points are touching the mat. You know, both hip points in the back of your body are touching the mat. Now that the hips settled, we're going to switch this into the right hand and pull the leg slightly towards the right. You'll feel it. You'll know when you get there. It's not a very big movement. <laughs> Breathe here. And one more breath cycle. Awesome. Switch to the opposite hand one more time. And this time we're going to use our arm strength to open that left leg out to the left to wherever your six is. And use your arm to support you there. 
Watch that the right hip's not rolling up. We still want both butt cheeks on the mat. Feels great. Okay, bring it up. Let's switch sides. So have that mat, that strap handy. Bring the right knee in, give it a hug, and extend the left leg away from you. And now, as you did that, I'm sure as you transitioned, you could really feel how much things moved and how much things changed. Really getting into the hips. Now bring that leg to the outside of the frame of your body. Point the sole of your foot up to heaven and grab the outside of the foot, pull it back. Half happy baby. You've got your x ray goggles on and you can see what's happening inside your body to your bones. The hip joint is a ball and socket joint, which means the top of the femur, the leg bone, looks like a ball and the hip is like a cup that the ball sits in, and it can rotate. And the two things that stop our range of motion are either bone, like you know, you can only move a bone so far until it hits another bone, or muscle. So if it's bone, that's it, that's your range of motion. But if it's muscle that's stopping you, then probably with work and practice, you'll be able to increase your range of motion. Awesome, okay, let's come back to center. Grab your strap, strap along the ball of your right foot, push the foot away from you and apply tension with both your leg and your arms. And then with that left leg still flat on the floor and both butt cheeks glued to the mat, we're gonna pull that right leg towards you until you're at your six. Check in, did that hip move? Oh, that's like a little tighter for me. Interesting. We're not going to be the same on both sides, and it's good to be aware. That might be a clue as to how you uh, carry yourself and use your posture at other parts of your day. Are you, for example, standing with more weight on your right leg or your left leg? Try to be aware of your body and your posture at other times of the day so that you can make corrections when needed. We're going to take that strap to the left hand and move it slightly to the left until you feel it, until you find your six. You won't, you won't need to go far. Breathe deep. Keep both butt cheeks on the floor. And then we'll switch. Strap to the right hand. Actually, let's hold that left hip. Make sure it doesn't move as we open the, the right leg out to the right. Wherever it gets to, use your arm muscles. Hold it there. Breathe deep and enjoy it. This is one of those wonderful moments where you're doing for you. Self-care at its finest. All right, come on up, back up, we can unhook. Just float that leg down and notice how the hip area feels. Awesome, awesome. Okay, we've got one more. We're gonna find that block again. There she be. And we're gonna put that block underneath our hips. All right, just like that not graceful, but it'll do. See if you can lean all the way back. So basically at this stage, we're in a supported bridge pose. And if this is feeling really good and you don't want to jinx it, <laughs> stay here. But if you want to get a little deeper into the hips, then try moving the left leg to straight. And then maybe 
the right leg towards the left. You can have some compression in the low back. That's fine. That's normal. If it doesn't hurt, then go with it. We like compression in the low back when it doesn't hurt because it means that our bones are being pushed together, which doesn't usually happen in our daily life. When you undo that compression, the bones come apart. The bones are like, hey, I need to protect myself from that next time. I'm going to get stronger. It's just like a callus. Well, I mean, you're not growing a callus on your bone, but it's the same kind of reaction as your skin making a callus. You know, if you were to rub your knuckles all the time, then eventually you would get calluses on the palm of your hand. It's the same idea. We want to strengthen our bones, and especially the bones in the low back. That's one of the most fatal areas, and I use that word lightly, not like literally, for osteoporosis. A lot of women who have osteoporosis have been in their low back. So that light compression of the low back bones is a very good thing. Breathe deep. Feel all the space, not just through the hips, but through the abdomen. This is wonderful for digestion and movement. If you've got cramps, this could help. And it's just really good for you. Take one more deep breath in. And if you haven't already fallen asleep, to get out of this, so you can bend your knees, lift the hips gently, gently and slowly up, slide that block away, and come to a sitting position. Right, last one. You know, cross that left leg in front and then right leg over top, like that. All right. And then we're just gonna twist. So our torso, our spine stays straight. We're just gonna wrap the meat around the bone. Okay, so just hugging that right thigh, right knee in, wrap yourself around and get that stretch through the outer right hip. side. That was a friendly one. It's a good thing we're not doing fire log today. If you don't know what that is, you're lucky. So we're wrapping our right arm around our left knee, twisting around and focusing less on the twist and more on the opening in the outer hip. I could stay like that all day. It's wonderful. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you have happy hips. Go for a walk if you can after this and make sure that everything's still moving and flowing. Thank you so much for joining me. I will see you next time. Namaste.